Hi friends, I'm back again with my Power Thoughts book and we're going to start looking at Power Thought 1 together. And I pray that you will get a book of your own and that you'll kind of follow along with me on this journey as we look at the 12 Power Thoughts. And number one is, I can do whatever I need to do in life through Christ. And here's the main verse that she uses. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Of course, that's Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, one little thing that I want to point out that Joyce says in this chapter is that miracles come in cans. <laughs> I like that little um, twist on words there. She says, I believe in you, God believes in you, and it's time for you to believe in yourself. Today is a new day. Put the past and all its negative, discouraging comments behind you. Negative words and words that speak of failure come from the enemy, not from God. So decide right now not to allow the power of you can't to influence you anymore. Um, God's Spirit encourages you and will, um, and will help you and urge you forward to toward success in every area of your life. Um, I told you that in 2011, I read this book for the first time, and I would um, just take one, one of those power thoughts a week back then too, and I would just really meditate on it and focus in on it. And I didn't have a small group at that time. But um, this, I'll tell you about an experience I had with this very chapter, this power thought, I can do whatever I need to do in life through Christ. I was um, probably, uh, probably about seven or eight months pregnant with Alyssa and I was having a lot of back pain and um, just a lot of aches and stuff. And I was working at a Head Start where there's tons of little four-year-olds running around. I had 20 of them in my room. And um, there was some times when I, my body would just ache so bad that I would just want to sit down or cry or just go back home and go to bed. But this verse, this power thought stuck with me. And I can remember um, having the children line up to get ready to take them to the bathroom. And I was standing um, by the door and I said, I wanted to say, oh, I just want to go sit down. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. My back hurts. Ugh. But instead, I just mustered up the courage to say, I can do this. I can do whatever I need to do in life through Christ. <sighs> and I just decided right then I was going to make myself believe that verse believe that power thought and actually walk it out even though i was having back aches you know the children were acting you know like a whole bunch of four-year-olds and um i was so pregnant and tired and grumpy and all that but i made a decision right then i am going to do this i'm going to be able to get through this day of work and i just took it one little step at a time and I'm telling you, it made the rest of the day easier. Now, at the end of each of her Power Thought chapters, she gives so much insight. I really would love it if you read this book and maybe even comment on this video about some things that uh, spoke to you in, the, in this chapter. But at the end, or, or near the end, she says, throw away your excuse bag. Like I was thinking, I could have just said, oh, I'm tired, you know, I just can't do this anymore. Um, throw away your excuses, things that um, start with, this is just too hard. Um, I can't see how I could ever make it through this. I'm afraid. I don't have anyone to help me. She says, throw those things away and trade them in. Just like 
if you buy a pair of shoes at the store and they're too small and you take them back to exchange them, exchange that excuse for a power thought. Um, so instead of saying, oh, I just can't do this, I can't take it anymore, say, I can do whatever I need to do in life through Christ. And at the end of the power thought, she gives a power pack of verses. So I would love to read those to you. Um, of course, she has Philippians 4.13, and then she also has Romans 8, 7, which I, 8.37, which I love. This says, yet amid all these things, so I'm thinking this whole uh, school of four-year-olds, yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. Oh, I'm so thankful, God, for that verse. I am more than a conqueror. And now Hebrews 12, 2. Looking away from all that will distract to Jesus. So look away from all those troubles and look at Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing it to full maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I'm so thankful that Jesus did not say, this is too hard, I cannot do this and just come off the cross or have all those angels come and rescue him. I'm so thankful that he persevered and did the thing that he set out to do. And I'm going to believe that with you. Whatever it is that you're going through in your life that's really hard, and I know there's a lot of hard things out there, just believe and have hope that you can get through this. If you'll walk along beside Jesus, let him lead you. Let him be your source. Look at him more than you look at the problem. Um, and I believe and declare that you will overcome every obstacle in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus paid a high price for you, and you are worth far above rubies.